Welcome everybody to the creating the tap files portion of our video. With the vCarve software, open the project CNC files. Carefully review all the tool paths and make necessary changes to suit your tools and machine. The tool paths are currently set with tool, feeds, and speeds that were used in designing the original project. Be sure to review them for your machine. Edit the tools and change the settings to fit your own machine and requirements. It is very important to recalculate all tool paths after making any changes. Once you have made the necessary recalculations for your machine and tools, reset the preview, then preview all tool paths again to visually verify the project's outcomes. Create the tool tap files for your machine by using the correct post processor. I cannot emphasize enough. Make sure you use the post processor for your machine. Once satisfied with your settings, save the tool paths using the appropriate post processor for your machine. Check the tool paths by air cutting the project or using rigid foam board to run a sample tool path. Now you're ready to make your own golf ball setter. Let's open our VCarve Pro. We are going to open an existing file and we are going to do the side, the golf setter side. Remember this particular project has multiple parts that have to be gone through and set up for your particular machine. So, we'll start out with the top side. This is a two-sided machining. To start out with the top side, if all of these files fit your machine, leave it a go and do nothing. But I always recommend coming in and previewing the tool paths. So in this preview, we drilled our holes and we cut out our dados and also did our profile around. So now we're ready to save our tool paths. To save your tool paths, you can combine things together. Good for instance, if you have something that has two of the same cutter, you can combine those files. In this particular instance, file two and three will be able to save together. Another thing that you really want to do is make your file names unique to this piece. And also, I always put a numeral in front designating the order that the files are going to be machined. That way, when I go to my pendant it's a lot easier to see what's going on up here make sure you output all visual tool passes one file and click add the side to the tool path name what that will do is take this name add top to it so you know this particular file is for the top side of this particular part so side holes remember they're quarter inches See, it says up here, quarter inch end mill. Save it for the post processor that's appropriate for your machine. Save the tool path. I've already got a unique name. All I have to do is go and save. It says you already got one. I know. I saved one already. So, I'm done. Then go to the next two. You notice if you don't take off the quarter inch one, it tells you you have different tools. Take it off. Now I can run these tool, two tool paths. Make sure your post processor is correct. Make sure you have these ticked off. Save the tool path. Now with this tool path, since it's a combined tool path, I would put combined on the end here. And I just put COMB as meaning it's a combined tool path. Obviously I already have one. I'm not going to overwrite it. 
and then save that one. Okay, we have everything saved for the top. Now we need to go to the bottom and save the files that we need for the bottom. The first thing that we need to do is put two holes in the spoil board to match the holes on the top side so when we flip it we get it completely orientated correctly. So we go in, add the side to the toolpath name, it's our spoil board, it's a quarter inch end mill, my right and correct post processor, save the toolpath, I saved it. The next one is the actual V carving. It's a 60 degree V carve bit. Post processor is correct. It's going to add the name to it. Save the toolpath. Save it. Yes, I do. I know I already got one. So now we're done saving the toolpaths for this particular board or this particular part. You're going to have to do two of these because you need one for each side, obviously. So we're going to close out of this and I'm going to show you on one more thing how to do this. I opened up the golf setter front. This particular one does not have a back side, so we don't have to worry about it. Come to toolpaths. But we do have a pretty long list of tool paths here. And you have noticed I have not numbered them. Okay. Again, just like we did before, if I have to make any changes here, you make your changes, recalculate all the tool paths, then go into the view section, the preview section, preview all tool paths. And if everything looks okay, go ahead and save the toolpaths. Again, anything that has the same tool, you can save together. So in other words, we can save the top two together for the very fact they're both half inch end mills. And we can save them together. In this instance here, I would put a number one in front of it because this is going to be the first operation that I want to do. You notice that I didn't add the tool path to it, but it does have front on it already. So I would go and save this. Go to the next two or three or whatever and see how many I can save together here. Oop, too many. So they are all the same. I can go into here and again I can put a number in front of it and save it. Last but not least, the last two cannot save them together because they're two different tools. This here is my spoil board cutter but what I'm going to use it for is making sure that my um, blank is the right thickness. This, I'm not going to designate a number for this for the very fact that you can do this at the very beginning to make sure your board is the right thickness. If your board is already the right thickness because you planed it that far, you don't have to do this step. So the next one is setters alignment pockets. You need these for when we put the two halves together they align correctly and you don't have to go and do a lot of monkeying around to align all of these grooves on side the front and the back when you go to your assembly. So we come in here save the tool path put a number there put four save it and everybody's happy. So that's how I go about saving my tool pass and get my tool pass ready and correct for my machining. Remember we have many files here to do so 
All together, we got 40, about 40 operations. Now, we're going to combine a lot of those together, but make sure you get all these files down right and correct for your post processor and your machine. That's really important. Otherwise, you're going to get some strange results. So, see you in a bit when we come back to the machining part of our videos. Thank you for being a good customer. Please thank all of our sponsors, Next Wave Automation, Ken Craft Company for all of your wood and wood supply needs, Crystal Lac for all your finishing needs, and make sure you see my website at silverback.com. Again, make sure you click the subscribe button before you leave and make sure you like our page. Hopefully to see you back in the next segment. The next segment is machining. Thank you.